All right, today I thought that I would give a tour of my bookshelves. I'm just going to start off at the top, work my way down to the right, just show off all the different kinds of books I have. For the most part, my books are in alphabetical order, but there are some exceptions, and this right here would be one of them. <laughs> Got a section of religious books on top just because they wouldn't really fit anywhere else, and in theory, they're easy to reach. <laughs> This over here is another example of a book that just has entirely the wrong dimensions to be able to fit on the shelf. So it's just lying flat up here. So starting off, we've got Animorph books. And this is the point at which you'll start to realize that my bookshelf has a good combination of books from childhood and my teenage years and books that I fought recently, because I like to hold on to some things especially when it comes to physical books. A lot of these for me hold some really good memories and that's part of why I keep them around and also when it comes to books like this honestly they just are comfort reads you know. So those are just first because like I said alphabetical order um, which means our next alphabetical order is Jane Austen. Then um, Here's another example of a book that's a memory, because it was actually a gift from one of my former professors. He, do, he does or did at least this thing where everyone who was in, I think it was his fiction workshop class, he would give them a book from his own shelf at the end of the semester that he thought that we would like. So that's one that I've always kept. Here's an example of one that I bought secondhand at a rummage sale. I've read it a few times myself. <laughs> this is also a good example of just showing off. I've got a little library stamp there that I'm quite proud of. I haven't stamped all my books with it yet, but I am working on it. So down here, we've got some Ray Bradbury, Jane Eyre. That's one of my favorite books of all time. Da Vinci Code might interest you to know that I have a copy of that. There is a story behind that and I'm actually going to be writing a blog post about it sometime in the near future. And here's my cat trying to make trouble. <laughs> She's wondering what I'm up to, I'm sure. All right, Da Vinci Code. Uh, this is one that I read for Academic Decathlon back in high school. <laughs> Still have a copy. Over here we've got some Roald Dahl books, again from childhood. This is a recent one. I read originally a library copy or maybe I had an audiobook of it, but I have a hard copy now. Lots of Sherlock Holmes. This is a book that was given to me by one of my good friends from grade school and high school. The Great Gatsby is one of my favorite books that I read in high school. Got myself a nice copy of that. Over here we've got Hank Green and John Green. All four of those are signed copies. And this one over here is a special edition of The Fault in Our Stars with a green cover that I got from the Project for Awesome. Down here on the bottom is where the alphabetical order goes out of whack because these books down here tend to be quite heavy. I wanted to have them all together with the same series, but I didn't want the shelves to start caving in. So that's where you've got those. Over here, the alphabetical order starts up again. We've got uh, The Scarlet Letter, another book from high school. We've got, you know, Brave New World, this one's another new one, so is that one. And then we've got The Phantom Tollbooth, a favorite from childhood. This book also is actually a signed copy, and it was a gift from that same friend who gifted me the fantasy book I pointed out. It's a little difficult to see because she used gel pen, but it's really nice. You can sort of see the blue and the pink colors there. And we've got uh, some Le Guin. This is a book that a teacher read to us in grade school and that left an impression on me. So I got my own copy and reread it as a kid, probably more than once. 
To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, I never read that in school, but I knew that other people read it in school, and so I wanted to get a copy and read it, and I did, and I liked it. <laughs> uh, we've got A Wrinkle in Time and all four books there. Chronicles of Narnia. I definitely like fantasy, and I liked it even as a kid. This book my mom gave to me because she met the author in our hometown. So this is a collection of stories. Door County is a place in Wisconsin, for those of you who don't know. That's where I live. So it's actually signed over here by the author of that one story. So that's also pretty cool. I really like the signed editions that I have. Um, not very many of them, so that makes them special. Bridge to Terabithia, um, much like that other one I mentioned that a teacher read it to us and I just fell in love with it as a kid. This is another one of my favorite books of all time. And this is the sequel of it. Other books by the same author because obviously once I liked that one I was like I gotta read everything this author has pretty much. <laughs> this one is one that I also really love by him. There's a story behind this one also, <laughs> and that is gonna get told in the blog post. Uh, but the short version is that I got it for free after entering an essay contest. So you can see here, it says that the book was donated, which basically means they gave it to me for free, I suppose. <laughs> Cause you know, I'm not like a public library or anything that you would think about <laughs> with like a sticker like that. But I guess that's what they had. Holes, another great book. This is the sequel, probably lesser known. Um, I still liked it though. This is a book that I haven't read yet, but want to. I've really gotten into buying hard copies of graphic novels lately, because I feel like, you know, it's kind of easy to listen to an audiobook or like buy an ebook of something else, but I feel like when there's actually art there, it's really nice to have the actual paper copy. Black Beauty, that's one that I had as a kid and has carried through all the way through the years. We've got a nice collection of Tolkien here, Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn. I've got three books by E.B. White. Definitely loved Charlotte's Web. I remember doing a book report on this one with a little diorama. Had a little plastic swan from like a McDonald's toy or something. <laughs> Fun memory. And this is the very last fiction book in alphabetical order by author. Really great book if you guys haven't read that one. I think it's young adult, but it's still a really good one. But here starts the section of other types of books. Well, yeah, I say books. These are really plays here. This is The Importance of Being Earnest. These are two Shakespeare plays. And then we've got um, books by various authors. Um, short story collections, Christmas story collection that I actually inherited from my grandmother, mystery stories, American short stories, and this is just a notebook that I have writing in. <laughs> You'll see more of those down below also. As we get into the miscellaneous section, we've got literary journals, we've got a dictionary and thesaurus, we've got a nonfiction book about Spelling Bees. That's another nonfiction book about the Harry Potter franchise and um, sort of the online fandom surrounding it in the early years of it. We've got a thousand and one books that you must read before you die. And that starts the section of how to write type books, how to program type books. And here is the other section of notebooks and things that I have written in over the years. So just to pull back, I forgot to mention that I've got some non-book things up here too, CDs, video games, and some little sort of coffee table-like books, I guess you could call them. I've got a little candle, electronic, nice there. I made that in college. I use it for storing coins also. <laughs> yeah, that's just a good overview of my library. And there's a reintroduction of my cat, Willow Stripe, because <laughs> she seemed to want to be here for the conclusion of the video.